Hey readers, we've been covering the idea of finding a theme in a story. Um, so I wanted to take a second look on what exactly is a theme. So we've been looking at our list of theme topics here, and we've been also using our list of theme statements. Now remember, a theme is not a detail from a text, but it is an overarching idea or one big idea that applies to all details in the text. Now not only does it apply to the text that we're talking about, but it should be such a big idea that it could apply to other stories as well. Um, so looking at our theme topics, we have compassion, equality, overcoming adversity. Uh, moving over here, we have self-control, fairness, kindness, hope, determination. So big overarching words that do not give specific details about a story that we're reading. Um, I was looking at some of our Google Forms the other day, and I noticed a lot of them had specific details from the text when talking about our theme. Those can be used to prove what our theme is, but that is not the theme. So what I want to do is take a second look at our story shells. We're going to read it here, and what I'm going to do is go through and pick out some important ideas that stand out to me um, to start looking towards a theme. Shells by Cynthia Ryland. You hate living here. Michael looked at the woman speaking to him. No, Aunt Esther, I don't. He said it dully, sliding his milk glass back and forth on the table. I don't hate it here. Esther removed the last pan from the dishwasher and hung it above the oven. You hate it here, she said, and you hate me. I don't, Michael yelled. It's not you. The woman turned to face him in the kitchen. Don't yell at me, she said. I'll not have it in my home. I can't make you happy, Michael. You just refuse to be happy here, and you punish me every day for it. Punish you? Michael gawked at her. I don't punish you. I don't care about you. I don't care what you eat or how you dress or where you go or what you think. Can't you just leave me alone? He slammed down the glass, scraped his chair back from the table, and ran out the door. Michael, yelled Esther. They had been living together, the two of them, for six months. Michael's parents had died, and only Esther could take him in, or only she had offered to. Michael's other relatives could not imagine dealing with a 14-year-old boy. They wanted peaceful lives. Esther lived in a condominium in a wealthy section of Detroit. Most of the area's residents were older, like her, and afraid of the world they lived in, like her. They stayed indoors most of the time. They trusted few people. Esther liked living alone. She had never married or had children. She had never lived anywhere but Detroit. She liked her condominium. But she was fiercely loyal to her family, and when her only sister had died, Esther insisted she be allowed to take care for Michael. And Michael, afraid of going anywhere else, had accepted. So here's something we know about Esther. She's fiercely loyal to her family. We know that she's done something kind. I'm going to write kindness here because that's starting to give me some ideas about Esther and about kind of what's going on here. Oh, he was lonely. Even six months after their death, he still expected to see his parents sitting on the couch as he walked into Esther's living room, waiting for the bathroom as he came out of the shower, coming in the door late at night. He still smelled his father's old spice somewhere, his mother's talc. Sometimes he was so sure one of them was somewhere around him that he thought maybe he was going crazy. His heart hurt him. He wondered if he would ever get better. And though he denied it, he did hate Esther. She was so different from his mother and father, prejudiced. She admired only those who were white and Presbyterian. Selfish. She wouldn't allow him to use her phone. Complaining. She always had a headache or a backache or a stomach ache. Well, there's some new information about Esther. That's interesting. He didn't want to, but he hated her. And he knew he didn't know what to do except lie about it. Michael hadn't made any friends at his new school, and his teachers barely noticed him. He came home alone every day and usually found Esther on the phone. She kept in close touch with several other women in nearby condominiums. So I'm going to write, Michael, he's unhappy. Esther told her friends she didn't understand Michael. She knew he must grieve for his parents, 
but why punish her? She said she thought she might send him away if he couldn't be nicer. She said she didn't deserve this. But when Michael came in the door, she always quickly changed the subject. One day after school, Michael came home with a hermit crab. He had gone into the pet store looking for some small living thing, and hermit crabs were selling for just a few dollars. He'd bought one and a bowl. Esther, for a change, was not on the phone when he arrived home. She was having tea and a crescent roll and seemed cheerful. Michael wanted badly to show someone what he had bought, so he showed her. Esther surprised him. She picked up the shell and poked the long, shiny nail of her little finger at the crab's claws. Where is he? she asked. Michael showed her the crab's eyes peering through the small opening of the shell. Well, for heaven's sake, come out here, she said to the crab, and she turned the shell upside down and shook it. Aunt Esther! Michael grabbed for the shell. All right, all right. She turned it right side up. Well, she said, what does he do? Michael grinned and shrugged his shoulders. I don't know, he answered. Just grows, I guess. His aunt looked at him. An attraction to a crab is something I cannot identify with. However, it's fine with me if you keep him, as long as I can be assured he won't grow out of that bowl. She gave him a hard stare. He won't, Michael answered. I promise. The hermit crab moved into the condominium. Michael named him Sluggo and kept the bowl beside his bed. Michael had to watch the bowl for very long periods of time to catch Sluggo with his head poking out of his shell, moving around. Bedtime seemed to be Sluggo's liveliest part of the day, and Michael found it easy to lie and watch the busy crab as sleep slowly came on. One day, Michael arrived home to find Esther sitting on the edge of his bed, looking at the bowl. Esther usually did not intrude in Michael's room, and seeing her there disturbed him. But he stood at the doorway and said nothing. Esther seemed perfectly comfortable, although she looked over at him with a frown on her face. I think he needs a companion, she said. What? Michael's eyebrows went up as his jaw dropped down. Esther sniffed. I think Sluggo needs a girlfriend. She stood up. Where's the pet store? Michael took her. In the store... In the store was a huge tank full of hermit crabs. Oh my! Esther grabbed the rim of the tank and craned her neck over the side. Look at them! Michael was looking more at his Aunt Esther than the crabs. He couldn't believe it. Oh, look at those shells. You say they grow out of them? We must stock up with several sizes. See the, see the pink in that one? Michael, look! He's got his little head out. Esther was so dramatic, leaning into the tank, her bangle bracelets clanking, earrings swinging, red pumps clicking on the linoleum, that she attracted the attention of everyone in the store. Michael pretended not to know her well. He and Esther returned to the condominium with a 30-gallon tank and 20 hermit crabs. Michael figured he'd have a heart attack before he got the heavy tank into their living room. He figured he'd die and Aunt Esther would inherit 21 crabs and funeral expenses. But he made it. Esther carried the box of crabs. Won't Sluggo be surprised, she asked happily. Oh, I do hope we'll be able to tell him apart from the rest. He's their founding father. Michael, in a stupor over his Aunt Esther and the phenomenon of 21 hermit crabs, wiped out the tank, arranged it with gravel and sticks, as well as the plastic scuba diver Aunt Esther insisted on buying, and assisted her in loading it up one by one with the new residents. The crabs were as overwhelmed as Michael. Not one showed its face. Before moving Sluggo from his bowl, Aunt Esther marked his shell with some red fingernail polish so she could distinguish him from the rest. Then she flopped down on the couch beside Michael. Oh, what would your mother think, Michael, if she could see this mess we've gotten ourselves into? She looked at Michael with a broad smile, but it quickly disappeared. The boy's eyes were full of pain. Oh my, she whispered. I'm sorry. Michael turned his head away. Aunt Esther, who had not embraced anyone in years, gently put her arms around his shoulders. I'm so sorry, Michael. Oh, you must hate me. Michael sensed a familiar smell then, his mother's talc. He looked at his aunt. No, Aunt Esther, he shook his head solemnly. I don't hate you. Esther's mouth trembled and her bangles clanked as she patted his arm. She took a deep, strong breath. Well, let's look in on our friend Sluggo, she said. They leaned their heads over the tank and found him. The crab, finished with the old home that no longer fit, was coming out of his shell. So take some time, look through our theme topics. Compassion, equality, we had talked about kindness, they were getting to know each other, opening up to each other, 
um, being yourself, friendship, never give up, jealousy, family, loneliness, anger, cooperation. Which one of these kind of stands out to you? And it does not have to be just one. So for me, a couple stand out, family. I've got compassion that stands out to me. Which ones stand out to you? Now, looking at our theme statements, which one stands out to you? Always be kind to others. Money can't buy happiness. Good can come from bad. Persistence pays off. Crime doesn't pay. Be careful what you wish for. Don't judge people by their appearances. Love conquers all. Sacrifice brings reward. Honesty is the best policy. Human beings all have the same needs. Accept others' differences. You can do anything you put your mind to. Hard work will be rewarded. Family is important. Again, there are like three or four of these that stick out to me based on kindness, compassion, based on the events of the story. What I would like you to do, I'm not going to show you which one stands out to me. I want to know which one stands out to you. So on your paper, what I want to know in writing, what themes are especially important in the story shells. And I want your first sentence to be a theme statement. Pick one of these, write it down, tell me that is what is important in the story shells. Once you have written your theme statement, it needs to be word for word from this page, then I want you to provide evidence. So tell me why. If you come up with two, you may do two. So write two theme statements, tell me why they fit. Happy reading.